Mr. Patani, we are also now joined by MS Unni Krishnan of Thermax, Vivek Karve of Marico, and Jatin Dalal of Wipro. Uh, to the corporate leaders joining us, I've been discussing with Mukesh Patani and Pranav Saita some of the fine print of the tax decisions that were announced today. And to summarize, for everybody's benefit, including mine, effectively we now have a lower optional tax rate of 22%, uh, as well as 15% for new companies in the manufacturing sector. For companies that want to move from 30% to 22%, I'm talking headline rates, not effective rates because surcharges and cesses would apply. But for companies that want to make a move, they, wa they have to make sure that they do not avail of any of these incentives. And I'm going to list them. Incremental depreciation, investment allowance, R&D deduction, SEZ-based exemptions, and area-based exemptions. Only if you don't avail of these incentives or exemptions can you benefit from a lower tax rate of 22%. You can set up a new subsidiary to set up a new manufacturing facility even if you are an existing company in the country and you can therefore avail of the 15 percent as pointed out by the finance minister but conditions there to apply uh, the broad conditions there being that domestic transfer price pricing provisions would apply uh, effectively meaning that you can't be shifting profits from the existing unit to the new unit to be able to avail of this 15 percent having described all of this now mr oni krishnan if i can ask you the question on what you make of how this benefit uh, in terms of higher profits for corporate India will effectively get passed on to the economy at this stage? Well, it is a very strong and positive move, uh, Minika. Uh, first and foremost, we have to compare this with uh, the effective tax rate applicable in the rest of the world. And India is now entering into a realm where we are already offering to the world that we are as good as any other part of the world and maybe better than many of the advanced countries in terms of the taxation structure. Uh, so I would say 22% basic tax uh, can move all the way up to maybe a 27% ETR. But a good number of companies in India are in excess of 30 to 36% range even today. So the additional uh, tax benefit of uh, ranging between maybe a 10 plus percentage uh, is going to be a major attraction for FDI to come in and that also in my opinion like somebody mentioned about I think Bhutani or uh, Pranav mentioned about timing of this uh, pause the tra trade war initiation between uh, America and uh, uh, China and the current visit of the Prime Minister to uh, uh, America and where we are expected to be announcing a lot more of benefits inviting people to come and set up their manufacturing instead of China into India it's a major move. It's far beyond even Article 370, in my opinion, as far as the Indian corporate is concerned. So it's a very strong move. Having the money in the hand of the industry is certainly, of course, not that uh, the real good companies in India who are wanting to expand capacities were bereft of uh, uh, capital. So this is going to be certainly uh, uh, one more addition. But the flight of capital away from India by Indian corporates and similarly, uh, aversion by the international companies to come to India, both this will get negated and will become India will become an attraction for people to come for setting up a manufacturing capacity, looking at the very large market available for virtually everything. Okay, I don't know about flight of corporate capital away from India. I thought that whole uh, international expansion phase died a few years ago. But Mr. Unni Krishnan, what tax, effective tax rate do you pay at Thermax, if I may ask? But 36%. 36%. So have you already spent several hours today figuring out how you're going to get to that 22 plus surcharge plus cess bracket or 25 odd percent? Oh yes. Normally it is done on the back of the envelope by the CEO. Then the CFO will start the work. Certainly it's going to be benefiting the company. But of course we have a, a company where uh, there is a tax benefit available. I got a unit in an NCS uh, in the Hage, uh, which is uh, also with uh, certain kind of concessions available. Uh, that we'll be evaluating which is better for the company and not that we are going to be ending up with the current uh, sets of investments uh, we just completed our first set of 500 crore worth of investment now we'll have to really seriously consider as to what more do we add on because we've got money on in hand available with us so uh, but, but let's assume that you know uh, the the prof the tax rate cut does put additional money in your hand 
what would you have put that money to use for would you have done it to maybe add to your already existing expansion plans or would you return it to shareholders or would you effectively try and give some of your customers a price cut and pass it on to them do you think that might boost demand which mo- which way do you think would be most effective for a company like yours in a sector like yours at this point of time additional capacity being put in just for the heck of will not do it because capacity utilization is between 60 to 65% so as i move ahead when i see an uptick in the entire market it is not me we are a derived uh, benef- uh, demand oriented company capital goods company sure. but this is going to be supporting a lot more of people who in the msme sector onwards when i say msme is not very small 500 crore 1000 crore 2000 crore kind of size companies uh, not listed companies uh, in the uh, food sector food processing sector uh in these areas i am sure additional capacities will get created where they were finding it very difficult to generate the capital i'm talking about equity portion of that one so i am waiting for this to be spurring the private investment in the country and that should increase the consumption and the existing capacities will get uh, totally filled up and new capacities will get uh, created which would mean new orders for people like us so i've got to wait for some more time but for overall market it's a very positive move Yes I think that capacity utilization issue is the one that I think bothered me the most in what is otherwise uh, you know a landmark decision that industry is just not at a stage right now where it seems to want to invest and therefore while the tax break is excellent and will boost profitability help hence help raise their stock prices might bring in more foreign investment into the equity capital markets or might allow for them to raise capital at a more uh, competitive rate the fact is where are they going to put all of that money if the demand side of things doesn't kick in vivek karve can you talk to us about how you're looking at this tax cut it's excellent i'm sure i have no doubt about it but do you think that the benefit will trickle down to those areas of the economy that right now uh, need the help the most uh, so hi um at the least what it has done is it has um, given a boost to the sentiment sure um and it does play out in an economy which is which is plagued um right now uh and i feel um over a period of time it will not be short term but over a medium term or a long term there will be uh, capital investment that will happen in the country so uh, immediately whether it will spur um consumption i am not very sure but vivek isn't that what we need immediately the ability to spur consumption i completely agree with you uh so see what are the options the companies have the yeah. options the companies have is um they can pass it on to the consumers right or uh, they can invest in creating new capacities right or um uh, they can pass it on to the shareholders so these are the three options no no the two more if i can add to your list vivek for those companies that have been struggling with a large amount of debt they can use some of the extra profit to repay debt so that would mean for a healthier balance sheet you could also pass it on to your employees if you can't pass it on to your customer if your pricing strategy at that this point doesn't allow for that flexibility you can pass it on as a you know huge raise to your employees which effectively also puts more money into various aspects of the economy now I, different companies will choose different routes talk me through what your effective rate at marico is and do you benefit much from the option of moving to 22% um so our effective tax rate is already below 22 all right so you don't have an immediate impact but there would be other companies in the consumer space uh you yeah. know wear a sectoral hat for me and tell me which one of these four five options would those companies use to be able to pass on this benefit see see given the low rate of growth that the consumer sector has been facing for some time now the best option according to me would be to uh, pass it on to the consumers okay and uh, give an uplift to the overall consumer demand so if you were at a higher than 22% rate and if you had picked the option to move to 22% you would pass on that additional profit uh, via a price cut on your products to consumers vivek somewhere i would feel it will be a it will be a judicious mix okay um in terms of passing it on to the consumers or in terms of passing it on to the shareholders or to improve the overall um uh, ratios for the company at the pnl okay fair it enough will, it will not be a one size fits all solution according to yeah me. i agree i think you know we that, that's why we're trying to talk to a variety of companies across a variety of sectors to try and understand that uh you know vivek one more question on consumption and that is that if this in the short to medium term does nothing to help boost consumption uh and while it's all very good for you know balance sheets and it will create healthier companies and companies that are poised to invest right when the time is ripe 
when will that time get here how are things looking to you right now um, um so i think overall consumption um, is a bit subdued um uh, that is what i could say um uh, and we only hope that h2 will be better than h1 Okay, that's hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's get to Jatin Dalal uh, of Wipro. Jatin, thanks for joining us. Now, very interesting that I would imagine many IT companies. Let me point out this to viewers, though. Uh, IT was the only sector that didn't do well in the markets today, and no prizes for guessing. Many IT companies actually do avail of incentives, uh, you know, via SEZs on other export incentives. Many of them, I think, are at effectively lower rates than 30, 33, 35 percent, uh, and so therefore the benefit to them is not very dramatic from today's announcements. Though companies like Wipro, which had announced a buyback earlier on and had not been able to get a grandfathering clause, uh, today have benefited from that. So, do you want to take us through? Just in your view on what you make of the sum total of these tax announcements on the IT sector. Uh yeah, absolutely. So, uh you know, I would look at it uh, slightly uh, broader, larger picture uh, okay. than just restricting it to to IT services. You know, when you look at an investment climate in a country, you look at a uh, stable uh, geopolitical situation, you look at uh, lower inflation, you look at ample availability of resources and then you look at conducive uh, tax policies and i think on the fourth front they have really taken a big bold step forward and i am very confident that this will ignite uh, a certain amount of investment across sectors uh, and i wouldn't worry too much about demand because you know if you go back in history uh, the if you have right capacity uh, you would be able to cater to demand no matter where the demand exists so maybe the demand is little lower in the country today uh, but this could give a big boost to make in india and you could be servicing uh, orders on manufacturing for uh, for us or europe or, or anywhere else in the world just the way it services did you know 20 years back when we started our journey and we have always been very thankful uh, to some of the Uh, fairly conducive uh, tax schemes that that have been did we just not lose? not just on it services yeah Okay so Jatin Jat if I can get uh, sector specific though with you uh, you know what kind of dilemma does today's announcement put in, put me's like yours into for because would you be willing to give up your SEZ incentive to move to 22% or are you already paying an effective tax rate of close to that So we have uh, a tax rate which is closer to 22% okay. um Uh, so we would study this little more uh, it, it's difficult to make a call on the fly uh, but uh, we would study this little more but it is definitely a big uh, positive on uh, on met because the met would clearly impact uh, uh, the it services sector and and certainly wipro uh, the reduction in the met rate so that's definitely a big positive for the sector Okay, interesting. Um you know, I I do want to talk since we're talking about SEZs, I'm going to take this back to our tax experts and ask them uh you know, Pranav since you made the point that many export oriented companies might not really be able to benefit from this lower tax rate because it would be tough for them to give up incentives. Uh what happens to the entire SEZ viability? Uh do you think many companies will stay with their within their SEZ zones or they might actually be attracted by this 22%? Have we been able to weigh the benefits and the costs? Of so so i would i would put it this way that yes immediate benefit to an scz unit an exporter or a company which is primarily into scz's and exports might not be very evident but let's remember that scz's themselves are being phased out so march 2020 might be the ultimate year or the last year also a lot of scz's might have already gone beyond their uh, tax holiday period so one would have to evaluate company by company and each case will have to be looked at on its own merits but i suspect that they will not immediately opt many of them may not immediately opt for the 22% tax rate but i think it's a matter of time before they ultimately and eventually opt for the 22% tax rate as we said earlier they have the choice not to opt in immediately but at a later point in time but once you opt in 
you cannot then opt out of the 22% rate. So I think the opting in might be deferred by some of these companies. I wouldn't say they will never opt in, but I don't think that many of them will opt in immediately. Uh, each case, of course, needs to be evaluated on its own strength and on its own merits, uh, depending on what the attack's position is. Yeah. Jatin, maybe I can put it to you this way, that for IT companies, uh, if you were going to uh, sort of effectively progress to a higher tax rate because of the sunsetting of your SEZ clause, now the fact that this 22% optional rate is available sort of makes it very clear and predictable for many IT companies that they will be able to stay within this rate range even after their SEC benefits uh, sunset. Uh, that's uh, that's broadly uh, directionally right. Uh, okay. As Pranav mentioned, I think we'll have to continue to see what that number would be because ETR also includes the, you know, the additional levies in terms of sales and 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 other things. Uh, this is headline rate. Uh, so <clears throat> so we will have to evaluate, but it certainly it makes us more competitive. It keeps investments in the country. As we speak, Amenka, we are we are putting a significant amount of money in additional infrastructure between now and next 24 months, okay. and we feel good that you know we we are in a regime that. Okay, I think we lost uh, Jatin in that last bit of his sentence, but he was saying something to the effect of it's good we're in a regime that is offering us, uh, you know, this kind of sort of visibility on tax rates. So I'll come back to both the tax experts as well as uh, the corporate guests with one last question. Now, this is going to impact the fiscal deficit. It may actually increase to almost 4% or thereabouts, uh, and that will have collateral impacts on the economy, including maybe even a sort of indirect rate on indirect impact on interest rates or borrowing rates in the marketplace. Uh, so, Uni, you want to talk to me about how concerned you are on that aspect of things? Uh, immediately there is a concern, but uh, it has got a short-term uh, difficulty and a long-term benefit. So, a country should be willing to accept it. I agree that the estimates which is floating around the uh, post afternoon today is all wrong. There is a 1,73,000 thousand crores. So they're all wrong numbers because nobody has really calculated. Uh, in my understanding, that may impact the uh, fiscal deficit to be stretched by maybe 25 uh, basis points at the best, if at all, uh, the outer limit. It could be much lower. But there could be some benefits also. But one point that we forgot to discuss so far is that a week back, uh, Thailand has cut down uh, the for startups, those who are willing to shift from China to Thailand. Uh, the tax structure brought down by 50% to 10%. And Vietnam has already got a regime started also offering those who shift manufacturing from China into Vietnam to 10%. So the new regime that we are currently talking about for new edifices and uh, foreign companies to come and set it up over there, we have not become the most attractive location. That's something which you should be recognizing. So if we are unable to be catching those, uh, it cannot be only on the, the mat or maybe the tax structure. A lot more of other benefits also should be offered to that. So overall, my understanding is it will certainly have an impact on the fiscal deficit. But in any case, at the time of budget itself, I told that in the current condition that the world is undergoing, trying to be the most disciplined one on the uh, fiscal deficit, it will prove a point that we are very prudent in that. But that will be imprudent for the I mean, development of the country. Uh, countries at this current stage that many have undergone in the earlier past have stretched up to four, four and a half also. So we are well within that. So I'm not unduly worried as somebody who understands the industrial economics that I'm not unduly worried about that it may stretch it uh, to a certain extent. Okay. But it's a good move. Yeah, it's a okay. good move. Okay. I'm not going to ask Jatin that question because I know IT companies don't have too many borrowings and I don't think Vivek is going to have to face or worry about uh, higher in, in interest rates, if at all. That is one of the collateral impacts uh, uh, at all. So I'll, I'll take it back to my two tax experts to sort of wrap this up for us in terms of uh, how they see tax policy progress from here on. Uh, Uni made an excellent point saying that for new manufacturing units we're at 15% but maybe still not as competitive as some of our neighbors in Asia are. Uh, Mr. Butani, do you see this 15% rate, uh, the spirit of this rate pervading maybe uh, more of our tax policy over time? We have a direct tax code uh, pending as yet. So I just wanted to make one point on the fiscal deficit, sure. uh, which is that uh, uh, the focus now would be more on the non-revenue targets of the government. So you could possibly see uh, some math being worked out uh, to propel 
the divestment targets point number 1 the second aspect is that yes there would be a short term strain but i think clearly the back of the envelope calculation that the policy makers would have done would have also assumed that uh, increased tax compliance uh, coupled with uh, higher corporate profits which in the short term is a challenge but in the medium term is certainly achievable uh, would more than result in the buoyancy uh, that uh, th that they are likely to achieve to be able to fill up this hole that has been left behind as a result of tax cuts today the third aspect which is very interesting is where we are in the midst of the 15th finance commission mm. uh, which is uh, got given been given an extension and uh, the one important aspect that this needs to be uh, uh, the finance commission needs to figure out is the devolution of revenues now this one like 45000 crore in the short to medium term uh, is going to impact the uh, state's share of revenues and states are obviously going to exercise more pressure on the center uh, to increase their share which means that the center's fiscal deficit in the short term uh, becomes an even increasing problem so i think it will be interesting to see uh, what the government does uh, on, on both monetary and the tax policy front in the next six to nine months because I'm sure that uh, this one like 45,000 crore gap uh, which has been left out today uh, is going to be filled up. Now one needs to see how it is going to fill up and to what extent these assumptions can come true. As far as your uh, point on tax policy is concerned, clearly uh, certain parts of the direct tax report uh, which were available suggested a 25% tax rate. So for me, 25% is a given. Now, there are two ways to look at it, half glass full or half glass empty. I think people will invest in India over a Vietnam or Thailand for reasons that are far beyond uh, India's export competitiveness. You know, export comp competitiveness has not been our real strength barring certain outlier kind of industries. Uh, and I think our uh, manufacturing uh, and, and that is also the assumption that is being made by the policy makers is predicated to address two aspects. The one, the issue on employment and two, to what extent these manufactured products will serve the domestic market from a price competitiveness standpoint to the customers. So I won't really worry about where is the tax rate of Vietnam and Thailand going and whether that puts us in a less competitive position with the current rate that we have. Okay, fair enough. Pranav, last word to you. Any word of caution uh, to the, you know, the many finance leaders watching this, suggesting or figuring out what transition they should make and how? So I, I would feel all in all it's a, it's a great uh, bold move. Yes, one should also not lose sight of the fact that we are moving towards a regime with less exemptions, incentives, more simplicity more focus and, and allocating resources based on merits rather than because of some tax reasons to into an SEZ or into a backward area and so on and so forth. Also, I think there's more stability. There is a beginning made somewhere. We might not be the same as maybe Thailand or Vietnam, but the fact is somewhere we can't get into a race to the bottom. A beginning has been made and I think it's a great beginning. The tax rates now are really globally competitive. I would feel there's far more flexibility for business now in terms of where they want to allocate resources because tax will not be such a major driver to set up an industry in a particular area and so on. I think it will revive animal spirits to a large extent. The fiscal deficit that you were talking about might over the medium to long term get addressed because of the additional growth, additional investment, additional employment generation that can happen. And I think that's the bet that the finance minister has placed on. So she is probably betting on the fact that if this revives growth, if this revives investment, private investment in particular, the buoyancy that is caused by the extra profitability, by the enhanced base of taxation might probably over a period of time more than outweigh what she is giving up in terms of rates of taxes. So I would feel all in all, yes, there are some, some areas still which one needs to be keeping in mind. For example, if I do set up a new company before or after 1st October, and if I do ensure that the manufacturing or production begins before 31st March 2023, can I keep on ramping up that particular company so the profits 
at the initial stage when the manufacturing or production starts might be much smaller but that company keeps growing in terms of future expansions and so on and so forth then will that concessional 15 percent or including surcharge says 17 percent rate apply for all time to come for the company and so on so these are things one needs to look at but i think all in all it gives far more confidence flexibility and simplicity to the tax regime for this to be a fillip for growth and investment in india all right, gentlemen, appreciate your deep insights on this discussion. Thank you very much for joining us. We know it's a good move in principle, uh, operationally, though, what it means for the economy in terms of being able to boost or jumpstart consumption uh, is still a question mark. Yes, it will help jumpstart investment, uh, but many companies say they're not yet ready uh, to get into the investing phase. But over the long period of time, moving to a lower tax rate is definitely excellent news. Thank you very much for watching Bloomberg Quint.